Welcome back to Living Local. Our next guest is no stranger to Rock Island. He spent 14 years as circuit judge for Rock Island County and five years as chief judge and was the first black prosecutor in Rock Island County. Judge Walter D. Broad has a long resume of jobs and accomplishments and now he can add author to that resume. His book, Bessie's Prayer, is a memoir of his amazing life. And joining us today to tell us a little bit more about his book is Judge Walter D. Broad. Thank you, Judge, for being here. So Hi. great to have you. Welcome. I, I'm, I'm so impressed. I'm, I'm glad to meet myself. <laughs> Well, let's get right to it because we have a lot to talk about. Let's talk about Bessie's Prayer and why you decided to write a book. Well, growing up, there were two commandments. The first was love God and family first, above all things, be excellent and show kindness in all endeavors and help others before you help yourself. The next commandment from Bessie, my mother, was to be active, doing something worthwhile every day, all day, so long as God gives you breath. So the last five years of my law life, I was a chief judge, engaged in a barn burner of a fight to build a new courthouse. It was 24 seven for more than four years. And when it was over, I was exhausted physically and mentally. So I took a little time off. And when I recovered, I heard my father playing the piano. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of the many dysfunctions in my brain. <laughs> and uh, he was playing his, his optimistic song. Get your coat and grab your hat, leave your worries on the doorstep. Just direct your feet on the sunny side of the street. What he was telling me in so many words was get off your butt and <laughs> do something. Yeah. And it came to me, write the book. Write the book. Tell your family mm -hmm. what you did with your life. Yeah, and what an amazing life too. You spent almost 20 years on the bench in Rock Island County, but you worked, you know, hard to get to that point. <laughs> Talk to us about the different jobs that you had before becoming the first black circuit judge in Western Illinois. You were a lawyer, a teacher, so many. First job and most memorable was to be helping the milkman. So I'm seven years old, I hear the pots and pans and I run down to my to have breakfast with my father and mother. And my father and I always visited. And uh, so uh, the milkman came. And he was a, a white guy, which was unusual because I lived in an all black neighborhood. But he was a white guy and he was tired. And he just looked like exhausted. So I went out and I said, what would you think if I helped you carry these heavy milk bottles up to the third floor and bring the empties down? So he looked at me like a little skinny black kid probably can't carry a gallon of milk across the across the road. Yeah. And but he says, well, we'll give it a try. So a, a few of those trips and he said, I'll give you 25 cents a day. And he says, is that fair? I said, well, I don't know if it's fair or not, but it was five candy bars. Yeah. So that was the first job. And there has never been a day in my life that I wasn't employed from that time all the way through. Uh, probably the most interesting was when I was a taxi driver. Yeah. Because of the dangers and yeah. the, the adventures. But, you know, I, I worked as a retail clerk. It, it just there never was a time when I wasn't working. Yeah. You dealt a lot with, with children, um, foster care, neglect, abuse uh, while you were on the bench. How did you deal with hearing these cases every day, weekly, that well, had to weigh on you. The next commitment from Mama, <laughs> <laughs> show kindness in all endeavors. And so when I listen to what's happened and I remember to be kind and to be fair and to be helpful, then I don't get caught up in the anguish. But I can still see the pain of the victims 
and I can do justice with regard to the perpetrators, mm -hmm. and it doesn't weigh me down. Yeah, yeah. You talked a little bit a few seconds ago about the, the courthouse and your yeah. fight for that courthouse. Will readers hear about this in the book? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's some pictures but in there, it too. Was a, it was a joyful battle, and every story in the book whether it's about the courthouse or when I was a taxi driver or when I was a school teacher or when I was having my fist fights in the neighborhood <laughs> or when I was a doo-wop singer uh, and I was a dropout for two years to be a doo-wop singer. Every story is joyful yeah. because every day of my life was joyful. I'm, I'm, it's joyful today. I can't really believe I'm here. Well, you have lived an amazing life, for sure. What have you been up to since you retired? Besides, you've been writing this book as well, but this what is, else? This is what I do. This is what I do, and just be with family. Yeah, yeah. And, and your mom said, you, you wrote a quote in the book, stay busy. Yeah. Stay busy. Yeah. So when, when I'm finished promoting this book, uh, I get to start on the next one. Well, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear about that. What do you want readers to, to get out of this book? Joy. I want them to read the stories and say, God, this is fun to read. I, I, I didn't know these things could happen because I think the things that have happened are unfamiliar to most people. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're all joyful, but there are struggles and things to overcome and living in a crowded neighborhood of of Protestant black people and I'm the only Catholic family. Uh, all these things create tensions that make life rewarding and adventurous and I've tried to tell the stories as joyously as, it, as I lived them. So I, I want people just to to feel joy and, and hopefully to, maybe I'm gonna read that story about the courthouse again. No, maybe I'm gonna read that story <laughs> about Walter, how he met his wife in that yeah. tavern and uh, <laughs> they were dancing and she was the best dancer. This, I relived my life, wrote it primarily for my family, yeah. but it, it grew and grew and grew until it became this, which I think are stories that are fun to read for anybody. Inspirational too, I have I to think say. So. I hope so. Yeah, I, I have hope to so. say. Well, Judge Broad, thank you so much for coming on the show and, th and thank you for serving our county on the bench for so many years as well. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. All right, and you can find Judge Walter D. Broad's memoir, Bessie's Prayer on Amazon or by visiting Bessie'sPrayer.com. We'll also have all those details posted on ourquadcities.com.